I'm here in Boston for PAX East 2018. Now this is the end of what's been a long and beautiful day. I have seen some fantastic games, some fantastically silly games, and some games so silly that they're fantastic. PAX East seems to draw quite the diverse crowd of folks. You got your cosplayers, you got your people who don't cosplay, such as myself. You got your vloggers, Twitch streamers, retro gamers. Really, you get the widest assortment of people. The sun's going down quick. So, I suppose now's as good a time as ever to tell you what I saw and did at PAX East 2018. The first game I played this year was a casual mobile arcade game called Super Drugs. Though my time with it was brief, I have to say that I saw some great potential in it. The game's premise is that you control a little polygon running along a line, and you have to determine where it'll stop in order to protect it from incoming obstacles. Stop too long, and you'll explode. Very simple, but surprisingly engaging. I'm glad I spent a few minutes trying it out. Afterwards, I chatted with a few developers showing off their games. I started by talking with Nick Clarkson of Merge Games, who's working to publish farming fantasy adventure Yonder The Cloudcatcher Chronicles on the Nintendo Switch. His company does physical releases of indie games, for which there's a surprising amount of demand. I then checked out the Transatlantic Gaming Summit booth, an exhibit that showed off a number of games from Germany, ranging from mountain biking game Lonely Mountains Downhill to the surreal and beautiful adventure Lost Ember. I took the time to interview some of the devs there. Now, what sort of game is Lost Ember exactly? It is a third-person exploration adventure, and as the main character, you play a wolf who has the special ability to become any animal he meets during the game. So you can play as a bird, as a fish, as a wombat. I think we got 12 different animals, and your task is to help the last soul of mankind. Like it's a post-apocalyptic world, and you have to try to help him to redeem something really bad he has done in the past and uncover his story, and uh, in the end you hopefully help him to free his soul. The booth did a great job at demonstrating the variety of games coming from Deutschland. Also, there were gummy bears. It wouldn't be German without them. Nintendo had quite the presence at PAX East this year, as they often do. I took one look at their incredibly crowded booth with its free hour line, and turned right around. I couldn't justify waiting that long when there were so many other games to try and developers to chat with. My next couple interviews were with Image and Form, who were showing off the Switch version of SteamWorld Dig 2, a fantastic Metroidvania platformer, and Megan Fox, no, not the actress, who had previously developed a Metroidvania detective game called Hot Tin Roof, and has since moved on to the first-person puncher, Spartan Fist which was inspired by her punching a floor and breaking her own fist. Life imitates art, folks. Here we wanted to like narrow the focus down just to a game about punching dudes so hard they explode and nothing else. One of my most hotly anticipated games of PAX East 2018 was The Gardens Between, a surreal upcoming puzzler about a couple kids making their way through strange, beautiful landscapes. In order to solve puzzles, you must push and pull time forwards and backwards. It sounds simple enough, but the game can be surprisingly challenging. I interviewed the game's programmer, Matthew Clark, who had plenty to say about his role on The Gardens Between. Have there been any particular challenges that you've run into? Um, I think just in general, making time manipulation games is really hard. Uh, yeah, it's really easy for things to get like very complicated very quickly when you start messing with timelines, so that's, that's been the main challenge. What's been your favorite part of developing it, though? Uh, I like doing a lot of the shader stuff, it's pretty cool. Um, when, you get, when you make like a really interesting level that like, makes people go aha, that's really fun. So coming to shows like this and getting people to play the game is really cool. The excitement didn't end there, however, as I also got to chat with developers of the upcoming Banner Saga 3. For the uninitiated, the Banner Saga is a brilliant series of Norse mythology-inspired RPGs. The first game had a tremendously successful crowdfunding campaign, and it sort of kicked off the gaming industry's odd fixation with all things Viking. The game's final chapter is coming out on July 24th. I got an early taste of it at PAX East, 
Though the demo was quite brief, it seems to set the tone as being darker and more desperate than the previous couple games. Personally, I'm looking forward to seeing how my choices from earlier in the series will pay off, as decisions made in-game get carried throughout the series. There are a lot of story threads that the developers have to work with. For people who do love the Banner Saga, we are planning to kind of tell some untold tales within that story. You know, we have a lot of area of the map that hasn't been explored, lots of stories within that timeline. One of the stranger VR games I got to play was an incredibly silly firefighting game called Paperville Panic. Developed by Australian outfit Ultimverse, it's currently available on the HTC Vive and is a game about saving a town made entirely of paper from a fire it was completely unprepared for. The demo I played was relatively brief, but positively bursting personality. From what I've heard, the full edition of the game offers plenty more for players to explore and extinguish. If you're in more of a medieval mood, don't worry, we've got you covered with Jousting Time, an upcoming VR game that's about everybody's favorite pastime, Jousting. We spoke with the CEO of Trebuchet Games, who's also one of the lead developers on the project. He had a lot to say about Jousting Time. I mean, what inspired this sort of game? It's very... I mean, this is very different. Yeah, basically, uh, we were just... Uh, this game was uh, made in a game jam uh, in November. We did a, a game jam in Montreal in the League Jam Nation and uh, we won the first prize for innovation, best innovation, and we finished in third, uh, third place general, third place, third place for, uh, for uh, best experience. And the inspiration was just we had to come up with something spectacular. And we, as VR developers, we were like, okay. We're just gonna do this kind of intense party game and you're gonna be jousting with opponents. We wanted to do a multiplayer game, so this is how the idea sprung up really during this 48 hour intense uh, competition. After the interview, I got to actually play the game. You've got to scream to make your horse go faster. <laughs> it was probably the most exhilarating experience I had at PAX East this year. But, that's not where the VR ended. I also got to chat with developers of Rhythm of the Universe, an upcoming VR RPG set in a world in which everything is based around music. I demoed the game briefly, and I have to say that I'm impressed with its execution. It's a room-scale VR game, though it plays a bit like Myst. You don't really walk around so much as you teleport from spot to spot. I can't wait to see the finished products. One game at the show that surprised me a little was Pizza Titan Ultra which is out now on Steam for Windows. It's a lot like Crazy Taxi, but instead of delivering passengers, you're racing against the clock to deliver pizzas from a giant robot, while a Chuck E. Cheese knockoff company sends its own army of machines to try and stop you. The game is bursting with personality, and I'm glad I got to chat with one of its developers. One of the more famous indie devs I spoke to at the show was Tommy Refinis, who is working on the upcoming Super Meat Boy Forever, sequel to the original Super Meat Boy, which came out eight years ago and was a smash hit of a precision platformer. The new game plays pretty differently from its predecessor. It employs procedural generation, and you only need two buttons to play. When you're thinking about these levels, think of each one as 50 Meat Boy levels smashed together. You know, we, we only smash like 10 or 7 together at a time to present a level, but each section of the level is a carefully designed Meat Boy level. So you get the same muscle memory, you still are like, oh, I know this one, or oh, I don't know this one. You know, like it, it, It's still very much planned and it still plays exactly the same as the first one as far as that repetition, the muscle memory, everything is, is still there. Because that's the Meat Boy pedigree. To do it any other way would just be terrible. Yeah, it would be a huge mistake, so. PAX East is a good time. There's plenty to see and do, no matter what it is that you're into. It's no wonder the show has seen so much success. If you're on the East Coast, you owe it to yourself to check out PAX East at least once. Have you been to PAX? If so, would you like to share a neat photo or talk about the games you played? Hit us up on Twitter and Instagram at OneRuleBeCool, and stick with us for more game news, reviews, interviews, and more. We've got coverage from PAX and other shows over on the 9-Bit Roku channel. Be sure to check it out.